guys, it's Shani here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. How have you guys been? It has been so long since I actually sat down and filmed a formal video. Uh, because I didn't even film a formal uh, January wrap-up in February TBR. So, yeah. Or it was February wrap-up in March TBR that I didn't film properly. But So here we are. I'm going to be showing you guys what I read in the month of March while I was on break. Yeah, so I finally got some reading done. And I'm going to try to get through this pretty quickly because I'm pretty sure, like, two of my walls have blown fuses in them. Um, which means only one wall is still working. <laughs> and um, my phone's only at 8%. It's charging, but it's not charging. Um, so yeah, we are going to try to get through my... March wrap up as fast as I can. Uh, there's a couple other videos I want filmed, but I just don't know how I'm going to be able to get to them with uh, storage, etc. wise. So I'm just trying to find my March wrap up page. Okay, here it is. I need a little reference because I can't remember star ratings. So these are in no particular order. Honestly, they're actually in the reverse order almost. Some of them are out of order because I dropped them trying to take a thumbnail. So, one of the things I read in March was She Just Wants to Forget by R.H. Sin. This is a poetry collection. I don't know what poetry collection this is of his. I know he's done a bunch. Um, <laughs> looks like this is a thir 12th or 13th poetry collection. This was so good. This had me bawling my eyes out because it just resonated so well with me. I was crying. It was so good. It was exactly what I needed to hear right now. So I obviously gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Would highly, highly recommend this uh, for s women who just need to be reminded of their worth sometimes. Because, wow. Wow. I saw a lot of negative reviews because uh, people were saying it was too preachy. But that's what you need sometimes is for someone to preach about, you know, knowing your worth. Um... This is another one I don't have on my list. Um, so I read, reread Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. Um, this was like my third time reading this and I really liked it. I felt like I got the full impact of the darker parts of the story more um, this time around than I did the other times I read this. I read this on audio for work. Well, not for work, but that's when I listen to my audio books is at work. Um, and yeah, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this reread. Uh, I've missed being in the Harry Potter world so much. Um, so yeah, five out of five stars for this reread. I'm really happy I was able to get to this in March. Next, I read Unpregnant by Jenny Hendrix and Ted Kaplan. Uh, basically, this is about a girl named Veronica, who is all set up to be valedictorian. She's this picture-perfect girl who's really popular at school until she gets pregnant and her parents are very anti-abortion um, and, you know, she just thinks that her whole life is going to be ruined if she has to tell anybody about this pregnancy. So she ends up going on a road trip to New Mexico with her ex-best friend to get this abortion. Um, yeah, the terms? I don't know. Yeah. This was such a fun read, honestly. I was laughing most of the way through it. I will say I did have some problems with it, which is honestly to be predicted with a book as controversial as this. But overall, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty cute and their whole road trip was so funny. And it was honestly really cute at the end. But the way that they depict kids in the book is like that there's no joy in them almost. Which I know for me personally, I don't really find joy in kids unless they're my nieces and nephews. Um, but it was like, there's no positive side to having a kid in this book almost. So that was like the only downside I would say. Um, so the road trip, which is was basically the basis of this novel, was really good. So I ended up giving this four stars. I was going to dock it a star, 
but the ending really picked up for me so I gave it a four. Then I read Lock Every Door by Riley Sagar and holy guacamole y'all. So this is about a girl named Jules Larson who is an orphan. She uh, is in between jobs. She's broke. She's living on her friend's couch and she gets this job as an apartment sitter at the Bartholomew which is one of the most glamorous and secretive buildings in New York. Um, she's just captivated by this building but there are a bunch of weird rules. Um, no visitors, no night spent away from the apartment, no disturbing the other residents and all because they're all rich and famous. Uh, so she just starts having some mysterious things and connections happen uh, in this hotel room and it ends up being something super sinister and she doesn't know if she's going to make it out alive. So I honestly had my doubts going into this because I didn't read the synopsis before going in. The only thing I read was the little rules at the top. Um, this was fun. I would honestly recommend going into this without knowing the synopsis because I feel like it really grabbed my attention more. Uh, and I think, I feel like in the synopsis, there's a spoiler. Um, yeah, I would not read the synopsis. I would just go into this and let whatever happens happen. I ended up giving this, what did I give this? Five stars. Yeah. And then right after that, my mom read this and she was completely blown away. Um, she really liked it too. So five out of five stars. Really liked that. I also read that on physically, by the way, and I read on pregnant physically. Um, then I finally got to Five Dark Fates by Kendar Blake. <sighs> this is the fourth and final installment in the Three Dark Crowns or the Queens of Fenburn series. Oh, <laughs> this hurt my heart. I was starting this physically, but because of my lack of audiobook and lack of time and need to catch up, I picked this up on audio really enjoyed this. I also was going to dock this a star because I was finding it hard for me to, I felt like I was grasping at strings sometimes, but honestly the ending really wrapped things up. It did hurt my heart a lot, but I feel like it wrapped it up quite nicely and I just cannot believe this is the end of another series. Ugh. Five stars for this she did a good job this is one of this is a favorite series of mine that wasn't my favorite book in the series but it was still good enough to be a five stars in my eyes but then again people have been telling me that I'm give away five stars too freely but if I feel like it's a it's a five stars I run on my own system I guess this is actually one of the first books I read in March well not the first first but it was up there and that is Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco. Oh, this is, again, the fourth and final installment in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. This is my favorite one in the series. I don't know why people are giving this such a bad rep because it was so good. Um, so yeah, you all know Audrey and Thomas. You all know their adventures, their mysteries, their banter. This book took it to a whole new level so much more romance steamy romance um the stakes were so much higher the murders were so much more complex and interesting i loved this and shout out to danielle who facetimed me almost the whole time i was going through my reading process for this book um she saw every single emotion that i witnessed through this and oh this book was so good i'm gonna get emotional just thinking about it oh i love this book so this obviously got a five out of five stars this is like it was so good so yeah read that loved that then i finally got to read map of days by ransom riggs which is the fourth novel in the miss peregrine's home for peculiar children series Oh, I still have my bookmark in here. That's where that bookmark went. So I read this one on audio when I was at work. I read Capturing the Devil physically. But yeah. I ended up getting this on audio. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I think I'm going to end up liking the second trilogy more than the first. 
because honestly, all the different peculiarities and loops and everything were cool in the first book or in the first trilogy, but I feel like the second trilogy is about to take it to a whole new level with the pan loop to con and all this sense of freedom. And I don't know, just getting to delve into Abe's double life um, and stuff, I thought it was so interesting. It again had that like road trip aspect of like, like a Percy Jackson book where they're going like on multiple adventures and whatever and a quest. I was thoroughly enjoying myself and I gave this one five out of five stars as well. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in Conference of Birds. Um, so yeah, I finally got around to this, guys. Yay! That one was on audio. This was the first book I read of the month and it was one of the books that I unwrapped from my TBR unwrapping. And that was Our Was Shot and the Song of Death by Roshini Chakshi. This is the second book in the Pandava novel series. I also really enjoyed this. I'm struggling to remember what it was about right now, though, because it was so long ago. Um, I literally finished this the first day of March. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. This one was really fun and witty. I thought it was... Hang on, I'm just struggling to form coherent thoughts right now because I'm just like trying to piece the plot together. It's been it's been a whole month since I read this, guys. Give me a break. So, again, this was another really fun adventure, but it also went deeper, I feel like. It dealt with deeper topics and issues within the Pandavas. And I thought that was really good to put in a kid's book. More kids need to learn how to express emotions and instead of growing up to learn how to conceal them. Yeah. So I ended up giving this a 4.5 stars. I think the reason I docked it was because dealing with other mythology that isn't Greek kind of befuddles me sometimes. Um, and I think this deals with what, Hindu mythology or... I feel like... I don't remember. Yeah, it's Hindu. Hindu mythology. So the only reason I got it a star is because I felt like while I was understanding what was happening on their adventure, I just wasn't getting the full picture on the mythology. And honestly, I think that's a personal error for me because I don't understand Hindu mythology the way I understand Greek mythology. But overall, this was a really cute book. I'm excited for, what is it, Tree of Wishes to come out? Yay! So I got that one done, and this was one that I p pulled off of my TBR and wrapping pile that's back there. That one was on audio. And then I read The Silent Patient by Alex. I still don't know how to say that last name. I apologize. And this is about a girl named... Ah, shit. Alicia! Her name is Alicia. I've been struggling with names today. So this is about a girl named Alicia who is a is an artist. She's a famous painter married to an in-demand fashion photographer. Then one evening she shoots him five times in the face and never and then never speaks another word. Then she her art gets more popular and then she becomes coined as the silent patient. Then this criminal psychotherapist named Le Theo, sorry, Leo, Theo is captivated by her story and wants to help her. So he takes on her case and tries to get her to speak about what actually happened the day her husband was murdered. This relies so heavily on psychology. So if you guys are into psychology the way that I am into psychology, you're going to love this book just for that alone. Just the way that they explain psychology and use it so heavily in their practice. I was impressed. Somebody, the author obviously did extensive, extensive um, research into uh, psychology. And the plot twist, my god, don't even talk to me. I had no idea that was coming. No idea. My mom, my mom was asking me for books to read. And when I finished this book, I did not say one single word. I just picked it up like this, 
brought it up to the living room and set it on her reading pile and walked back and didn't say a word. And I I couldn't say anything. I just didn't know how to comprehend what I had just read. I was like, what? <laughs> so this got a five and five stars. I had no idea what the plot twist was. None. And I also read this physically. So that was all the books I read in March, y'all. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight books is okay. Nine books. I read nine books in March. So still not my goal. There were, I think, four that didn't make the cut on my list. I didn't get to... I didn't finish The Beautiful because work. I DNF ninth house because I couldn't get into it and then I poorly managed my time so I didn't get to scythe or fangirl. I think that's all the ones I missed unless I had um something else on my TBR. No it looks like I got to everything else. So yeah that's festive. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time to get into what I'm reading for April. And also, since I've been getting a lot of questions and messages about it, I think I'm going to do another video about my reading schedule. I'm trying to think of a way to film me making my own reading schedule. Uh, I'm just running a little bit low on daylight. And like I said, the fuse is blown in my room. So, um... I actually oh I guess that light works but my lamp isn't working right now it's the big picture and this is where I film so yeah we have an April TBR coming which now that I'm looking at it is quite daunting when it's all stacked up like this uh, but I'm sure I'll be able to manage it just fine questionable <laughs> um, then again, I do have a lot of rereads on this list, and I don't know, maybe it won't be too bad, you know? I can honestly say that I think I'm going to enjoy all the books that I read. I think I picked a good TBR for April. Let's see if you guys like it. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you all for being so patient with me in the month of March while I was on my break, and... <sighs> Still not 100% better, but you know what? We're just going to get back into it because I can't be on break forever. Um, I know that I could and you guys would understand, but I just, I think it's time for me to come back. It helps being able to talk to you guys when I'm all on my lonesome home alone. So, yeah. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.